Hey y'all, welcome to Miss Clark's Chemistry Class. In this video, we are going to delve deeper into how ionic bonds are actually forming. So go grab your notes, and you know what also might be helpful? Some colored pens. Because remember, ionic compounds, they transfer electrons. The non-metal is going to steal the metal's electrons. It might be helpful to show that with different colors. So by the end of this video, you are going to completely understand how metals and nonmetals become cations and anions and then stick together to form an ionic compound. Let's get started. To look more closely at how ionic bonds are formed, first we need to remember that ionic bonds are formed when electrons are transferred. That's why ionic bonds are so strong. The nonmetals are stealing the metals electrons. Strong bonds. Let's show how the nonmetals steal the electrons from the metals. First, let's look at the Bohr models of lithium and chlorine. Lithium is number three on the periodic table, so it has three electrons, but it's in group one, so it has one valence electron. Remember, valence electrons are those outermost energy level electrons. Chlorine is number 17, so it has 17 electrons, but if we look at that third energy level, there are only seven electrons. So if we remember the octet rule, octet eight, that means elements try to achieve a full valence. And a full valence shell is eight electrons, a full S and P. S holds two, P holds six, that's a total of eight. Right now, lithium only has one valence electron, one electron in its S, very unhappy. That's why it's very reactive in the alkali metals. Chlorine is a halogen, also very reactive. It has seven valence electrons. It really, 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 really wants one more. So anytime chlorine gets close to lithium, it's gonna steal that valence electron. Lithium is much happier because it's one S sublevel is full. First energy level, remember first energy level only has an S, and it has two electrons. S holds two electrons. Lithium is a very happy plus one cation right now. Chlorine, which had seven valence electrons, now it stole that electron, and so it has eight. That means it has a full S and a full P. Now chlorine is very happy, and it's also a negative one charge. And so lithium's plus one and chlorine's minus one, they just join right together. Now, even though ions have charges, when ionic bonds form, those charges cancel out. And so ionic compounds have a neutral charge. Their pluses and their minuses have to equal. Lithium was a plus one, chlorine's a minus one. That cancels out and equals. We get LiCl. Let's look at another example. What if we have aluminum and oxygen? Now, aluminum is in group 13. It has three valence electrons. So I'm gonna draw that Lewis dot structure. Three dots represents three valence electrons, and oxygen is in group 16, so it has six valence electrons. Let's draw that Lewis dot structure. So there's oxygen's Lewis dot structure, six valence electrons. Remember, octet rule. Oxygen wants eight, it has six. It's also more electronegative because it's bifluorine, and so it has and the ability to steal electrons. And so it's going to steal two of aluminum's electrons. And when oxygen steals those two electrons, it gets a negative two charge. But if we notice, aluminum still has this electron. So we're not quite done yet. So if we bring another oxygen in, that oxygen is gonna steal aluminum's extra electron. So now, aluminum has lost all three of its electrons. It has a charge of plus three, but we still have a problem. This oxygen has only stolen one more electron and it wants to steal two electrons. And so we've gotta bring in another aluminum and oxygen is able to steal one of aluminum's electrons. Now oxygen has a charge of negative two. It gained those two electrons to obey the octet rule. Oh, but we've created another problem. We've got two extra electrons on aluminum. I hope you're starting to see what's about to happen. That's right, we needed to add one more oxygen and that oxygen stole the last two electrons. 
Because remember, we mentioned ionic compounds, they have to be neutral. So that means all of the electrons have to transfer. So while we were trying to balance all the charges to make everything equal zero, it took two aluminums to match up with three oxygens. So if we put all of this together, when aluminum oxygen come together to make a compound, it's gonna take two aluminums for every three oxygens. So Al2O3. Let's look at this example with calcium and bromine. Now calcium is in group two, so it has two valence electrons. Let's look at its Lewis dot structure. In bromine, that's a halogen. It's over in group 17 and has seven valence electrons. So I'm gonna draw that Lewis dot structure. So calcium to obey the octet rule wouldn't mind giving up its two valence electrons because up underneath there, a full valence shell. And bromine, seven valence electrons, it almost has eight. It wants one more so bad. And so if it gets close to an element that doesn't mind getting rid of some, it will steal one. And when it does, it becomes a negative one anion. But look, calcium has an extra electron. Bromine doesn't really need it. It's good. It has eight valence electrons. When you mix calcium and bromine together, you don't just mix one atom of calcium and one atom of bromine. You have millions of atoms of calcium and you have millions of atoms of bromine. So there are tons of calciums around and tons of bromine. So guess what? There is an extra bromine around just waiting for that extra electron and it will steal it. So when calcium and bromine come in contact with each other, one calcium will bond with two bromine. Because remember, ionic bonds, they are made of ions, which are made of charges, but the compound itself must be neutral. So when calcium and bromine come together, it's always going to take one calcium to two bromine because calcium is a plus two and bromine is a minus one. So when calcium and bromine come together, we're going to get CaBr2. So you see, you just go back and forth, taking electrons from the metals, giving them to the non-metals until everything has a full octet. If you found this helpful, make sure and check out my other tutorials in the description below. Also, if you have friends that are struggling in chemistry, make sure and share this video with them. You need to know how covalent bonds are formed. Stay tuned for that video. That one's next. Until next time, bye y'all.